enjoying themselves. This has been an amazing conference, and I've learned so much and been so inspired, and I hope that you have been too. Um, there have been a lot of common themes that have been expressed on the, in the conference, and basically most of them have been love your body and soul and move it daily, and your food is your friend, so don't abuse it. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start off by uh, telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a fairly traditionally trained gastroenterologist. I practice here in Manhattan. Um, I went from someone, again, classically trained to someone who believes food can be as powerful as any drug. And just like any other drug, too much of a good thing can definitely be a bad thing. So as I said, I was trained in the traditional American medical training si system. Uh, I was trained and taught about treating reflux disease with antacids. Uh, treating constipation with laxatives, diarrhea with, um, with anti-diarrheal anti medicines, inflammatory bowel disease with anti-inflammatory um, medications. Uh, I performed endoscopies and colonoscopies and still do on a daily basis, looking to see what um, causes your belly to ache, and I have a pill to, to cure it. Basically, that's what traditionally we were all ta thought about. I was usually most of my patients' third or fourth consultant to talk to them about their medications. They were given antacids once, twice, maybe three times a day, and none of them had any really bad acid-related disease. Um, anytime I did endoscopies and colonoscopies, I looked for gastritis, esophagitis, reflux disease. Anything that ailed you, I looked for that. Um, and then a few years ago, I realized a lot of these people were treated for diseases that they didn't really have. They didn't have evidence of acid-related disease, yet they were given antacids. It didn't make sense to me. So I started to, talk, started to ask them what exactly was exacerbating their symptoms. Was it, you know, was it their anxiety? Was it their stress? Was it their food? And there seemed to be a common theme, all three of them. I was also involved in a film called Supersize Me. Not only did it shake up the food industry and raise awareness in obesity, it showed and brought awareness of how food can actually affect our livers. The filmmaker developed fatty liver disease, all related to a very high-fat diet. And that's one of the leading causes of liver disease in the United States today. So I'm going to talk to you about choosing your foods and eating it properly, trying to help um, figure out a diet for you. So life's all about choices. You can make good choices and lead good food choices and lead to a healthy lifestyle, or you can pick poor food choices and lead to a lifetime of illnesses. So basically, eating and, and choosing a diet, is when you bring it, break it down to the fundamentals, it's actually fairly simple. Basically, you want foods that are high in fiber, low in fat, lean proteins, whether it's animal protein or vegetable protein. Um, you want to limit your carbohydrates, hydrate with water, eat your foods mostly in a basic, unprocessed form, so whole foods. You want to eat the rainbow of foods of colors, avoid the, the salts and the sugars, and alcohol in moderation. Simple, basic rules. All you need to do is follow that, and you will be happy. Easier said than done. Again, it's all about food choices. When we're given a lot of choices, we're out socializing, it's a lot harder than we think. But you have to keep things into perspective. We can have the fun foods on one side or the healthier foods on the other. Again, choosing our proteins, choosing how it's prepared is all important as well. And, food, and fats. Again, years ago we thought healthy fats, that's just an, that, that's in, impossible to have. But there are healthy fats. They're fats that actually help to reduce cholesterol and reduce inflammation. So that being said, picking foods can still be a challenge. We need to find foods that give a bigger bang for our buck. Generally, we want, again, think about our rainbow, Roy G. Bib. We all were taught that in school. We want foods that are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Meats need to be lean. Uh, dairy needs to be low fat. And again, your fats need to you pick them wisely and, and um, carefully. So some, someone came up with superfoods. Um, there's about 50 of them, depending on which site that you look for. Um, but that can get kind of boring, picking from the same 50 foods. But it's still a lot of variety. You can always pick and choose from um, a whole variety of rainbow foods. 
Um, but one thing to keep in mind is you want to just substitute the bad calories and put in the good calories when you're, when you're making a decision. And remember, these are superfoods, not superheroes. So if you go out and get your double cheeseburger with chili fries and then go home and eat a basket of kale, it doesn't negate the cheeseburger effect. <laughs> so as I said, a big part of choosing what you eat is how much of it that you do choose to eat. So the, um, uh, gone is the uh, food pyramid where we had to figure out what slice of the pyramid we could have and how much of it we could have. This is a, a plate that my, my gov, uh, sorry, my plate.gov came out, which is a very good visual to tell us how to pick and choose our foods. And it gives our portions of what we're supposed to be eating. So almost half your plate is between fruits and vegetables, a little less than a quarter is protein, and then a little more than a quarter would be grains, and then you have your low-fat dairies on the side. So putting the, those portions into into visualization, it makes, you, makes it a little bit easier to plan your plate for the day. So as far as what's on our plate, then we need to talk about how much is on our plate. And since none of us really walk around with weight scales or measuring spoons or measuring cups, we do walk around with our hands, because after all, we do use our hands to eat. So simple uh, ways of remembering how to eat. It's like the palm of your hand is about how much protein you should be eating. Um, the tip of your thumb is how much fats as far as butter. Um, the full thumb is about how much cheese. A fistful is about a cup, so that could be your measure of, of vegetables. And then the palm of your hand is about half a cup, which should be your starches, whether it's rice or pasta. I mean, again, we could easily just pick a diet and, and follow that diet, but you know, that's going to be hard because the short list is here. And that's going to, I, I kind of think you may lose weight with it, but I guarantee you will gain some more after you come off of it, and it's very difficult to sustain it. So when you're picking a diet, I've given you a couple rules that you can have. I've given you your portions of your, your um, types of foods and how much of each food to have. But your food, your food plan, your personal food plan, needs to be sustainable, economical and portable. You need to be able to eat it whether here in New York or out in California or if you're in Europe or Asia. If you keep those things in mind, you'll never be hungry, you'll never be worried about what to eat, and you'll always be satisfied. Because um, again, the, the, this needs to be a long run type of behavior because you're gonna have to do this for the rest of your life in order to keep healthy. Again, goals essentially, you wanna look at your calorie count depending on your activity level. But thinking about your fruits and vegetables, two to three t servings, vegetables, three to five servings, fiber, 25 to 30 grams, I can go on and on. But basically, this is what we need to do in our diet. And if we can manage this on a day-to-day -day basis and to pick the variety of the colorful foods, we, we can actually eat very healthy. Um, so be basic rules, choose your whole foods, watch your portions. Map out your diet so it's economical, portable, and sustainable. I'd like to thank you all for having me here and listening. Um, remember, good health is a choice, so choose wisely. I'm Dr. Ganju. Thank you again.